Hey, I'm Alec, and on this quick tip, we're gonna talk about color planning. Finding the right color combination for your 3D printed assembly can be difficult, especially if you don't have a background in graphic design or color theory. Some colors that look good on their own don't always look good when you put them together. Luckily for you, I've compiled some easy ways for you to create some beautiful 3D printed assemblies. Let's get started. If you don't feel very confident in your ability to pick out colors, you should definitely check out Adobe Color, Coolers.co, or Color Hunt. These are three websites all designed to create color palettes. There are a lot of different ways that you can create them. Either there's some that are designer curated, where there's a designer trying to pick the right colors that all go together. There's some that are randomly generated to go along some specific algorithm. Or there's some that use a user-friendly generator so you can pick your base color and then start working with your secondary and tertiary depending on the different ways you want them to go together, like complementary, or if you want them to all be in the same sort of color family. There are a lot of different ways that you can make colors work well with each other, and that's all part of the study of color theory. You can, of course, also check out the Matter Hackers Instagram, where we have a lot of our 3D prints, like these two in front of me, or even all the ones behind me, and you can check out some of the color combinations that we do with those there. Studying color theory and applying it is a whole other matter because it really just is subjective and depends on your specific tastes. For me, I like to make my parts either analogous or complementary. Phil's Cruiser here is analogous because I have a main color family and then a couple other colors that contrast and make it pop. I have the main red, then I have orange and yellow which are in relatively the same family, they're all very warm, but then we have the light blue in these smaller parts to make them pop out. Whereas here with the engine, it's complementary. I have a very subdued vertigo gray, there's some gray parts, but then all of my detail is done in much brighter colors to make them pop. You have the luminous orange, the metallic gold, you have high five blue and more luminous orange for the camshafts. There are a lot of different parts here that I want to stand out, so I make those in the brighter color and the main body in the subdued color. There are a lot of different ways you can actually do the pre-planning, but I like to use Autodesk NetFab for my workflow because it really gives me the option to virtually reassemble my parts from something that may have been initially pre-plated. So let's go into NetFab so I can really show you what I'm talking about. So here I've taken the time to move all of Phil's Cruiser into position. And if I select any object and right click while hovering over it, I can click change display color and pick from a preset list. I can define my own and save them or I can pick from any combination of RGB, hue, and saturation, or just pick one from the display over here. The streamline things, I can even group models together and change the color of an entire group of models at once. Of course, it's not a one-to-one -one comparison because a lot of filaments have a bit more flashiness to them than what you can get out of what's just displayed on screen. Like, I'm not gonna find a color in NetFab that's the same orange or has the same sparkle as vertigo gray, or has the same sort of shimmer as some of the more metallic colors but it takes out a lot of the guesswork that I used to have to do with my models. By having this schematic, it makes it a lot easier to test out and change colors until I find the right combination before I even start printing. Alternatively, if the model you are working with is designed for multi-extrusion 3D printing, you can use Mosaic Canvas to import the separate models and color them in a very paint-by-numbers approach. You'll be able to easily select each model or even individual triangles and set their colors to match the filament you intend to use. Then, when you're ready to use the mosaic palette to print four colors at once, everything is already set up and you can jump right into printing. Another method that might be more accessible to more people is to use an image editing software like Photoshop or GIMP to take a picture taken either by the designer or by somebody else that printed it out and use that as your template so you can manually color it in. Once I brought it into Photoshop, I went ahead and duplicated the layer since I had a locked background layer and created a mask. Then from here, I used the polygon lasso tool to select the entire spaceship and delete everything else so that I had a good template to work from for the other layers. From here, I'm going to use the polygon lasso tool again, along with the brush to color in everything that I don't want to be part of this layer. So I leave behind only the red parts, which I can then go and show everything again do some image adjustments and change the hue and saturation to approach the color that I'm looking for for the final printed part. This doesn't give you as much freedom as coloring in a 3D model would, but at least gives you something to start with instead of totally guessing and starting a printout without any idea of what your print might look like. And that's it. 
You should have a better idea now of how to create a 3D printed project with colors that form a more cohesive final image. Matterhacker's variety of colors and materials with fast and free shipping might even be what you need to meet the diverse color palette that you've created. Have fun with your colorful palettes. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Hey there, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that quick tip on color planning and that it's given you some ideas on how to color in your 3D printed assemblies. If it does, be sure to tag us on social media because I'd love to see them. If you want to read some in-depth articles, be sure to go to matterhackers.com or to stay up to date with all of our digital manufacturing content, you click subscribe. See you on the next one.